All right, welcome to tonight's game. Tonight we've got a Nations Cup game with Sweden versus Argentina. And on the Swedish team, we've got um, Daniel Dunbring, Anton Scott, and Henrik Pettersson. And on the Argentinian team, we've got Matias Zanetti and Guillermo Tribinio. Right, so Sweden. Uh, let me see if I can remove that. All right. And like that. Okay. Yep, that should do it. All right, uh, so Sweden has played one game so far, a very epic game against the US uh, last week. And so tonight is the second game against Argentina, and the uh, Sweden-US game, I'm not going to spoil it if you want to go and watch it. Uh, I think Justin streamed it, and it was it was an excellent game. Um, so, tonight's game is, uh, well, the starting, head, starting hand is um, not great, not terrible. <laughs> Um, could be better. Middle East and NASA is a decent combo. What would your headline here? So Sweden is the USSR, as you can see. CNS is always a decent headline. Considering defectors, both players have made a, or well, both teams have uh, made a Standard setup, and they do, and they go for CNS. And the Argentinians headline Olympic Games. It's been a while since I saw that. And they win it two victory points. Probably signals a fairly weak hand, or at least not uh, that many good headlines. But no access cards that we have to to uh, make sure that we get to play. I would imagine Duck might be used here in the early part of the turn to reduce the number of EPs and also to get DEFCON down quickly if we want that. Uh, but then, then again, we might not want that. Only one four up that we probably don't want to use if we can avoid it. Uh, Middle East scoring, so I, I imagine that would be the focus here, at least. Might want to hold on to the goal, maybe for next turn if Europe is still still available. They go for placing influence with dark. Uh, reducing DEFCON to 4, threatening um, Pakistan there, and securing presence in the Middle East, very important. And we've got NASA that can give us another battleground. But no, they changed their minds. Apologise for the stream being a little bit blurry. They are thinking about this move, and it is a pretty important move. With Duck, because Duck has many 
many um, possibilities here. I, I, I think feel like the other cards don't really have that. US Japan, you can play it if you're in a in in a in trouble, but I think you would rather space it here. Containment is obviously AR6. Truman only one up. Nasser only one up. You probably want to vent it. And the goal. I mean, if you can hold on to the goal, I think that would be useful, but that might be a luxury that we cannot afford here. They seem to still decide to do this. And will they finally commit it? No. <laughs> They changed their mind a third time. They go for the goal instead, or not. Thinking about queuing there. And they go for a coup with the goal, and it's a bad roll. It's a bad roll. I think I liked the first idea better, actually. But um, it would be interesting to hear their reasoning there. Obviously, if that coup had worked, it would have been okay, but... Now you kind of have to play duck at some point anyway, and you will give up more points. It's also a lot more difficult to get access to France now, unless we draw decol or destal for Europe, um, Europe access. Obviously, even with this idea, uh, the idea would have been to roll slightly higher than they did. Even just one more would have been great. Now let's see what Argentina does. I think this is the first time, or I'm, I know this is the first time Sweden plays Argentina in the Nations Cup. And they decided to reinforce Iran. I think that makes sense. And also to spread out a little bit. Now Sweden seems to want to go for another coup in Malaysia with duck and cover. A little bit surprised about Malaysia here. But it is a very good roll. And that that gamble definitely paid off. DEFCON goes down to three, and we now have uh, undisputed access to Thailand. I say we. I mean, they are my team after all, so um, I think that's how I'm going to do it. But yes, uh, definitely paid off. Um, gaining access to Asia, which otherwise would have been difficult with the US uh, back in Iran. Unless you make sure you get the next coup as well. Now, will the US try and coup, or will they spread out? I'm, I think I would definitely move into Pakistan here if I were them. And that's what they do. Very interesting situation in Asia. Now, the US has free access to 
India, of course. Sweden will take Thailand. Uh, and then South Korea, as always, will decide the fate of... I say always. Um, it's not always like that, but South Korea is usually a very important country. Um, will decide the fate of Asia. Or if anyone gets the war. <clears throat> IP war, that is. But all the more reason to try and get rid of US Japan here, I should think. Not give them any free any free battlegrounds. So right at this moment I don't think there is that much that Sweden can do. Of course you want to make sure you have presence in the Middle East. But you can wait. But then you would have to play containment in AR5 if you want to use those ops. And of course there's the uh, possibility to use the China card as well. Uh, but that's something that I think should be avoided, if at all possible. Um, they go for Truman, just the one-op and securing presence in the Middle East. And as it is now, um, it would be perfectly fine to, to score the Middle East without really trying to fight for it. But then again, if you have NASA in your hand, you would like to event it. Uh, but of course that would give a coup target for the US in Egypt, which wouldn't be ideal. Then you'd want to lower DEFCON, but that's not really something that you can afford to spend time doing here. Also, you kind of want those three VPs if you can get them, but that means that you will probably want to uh, score the Middle East without taking Egypt first. Unless the US somehow manages to lower DEFCON on their own, which I expect will take a, a while. Going into Thailand here is what they're considering, it seems like. Obviously good to make some headway into Southeast Asia and uh, on the way to India, but I doubt that the US would let them get there first. Europe isn't getting much love at this point. They go for the China card. Spreading out, going for Asia Dom. No, maybe not. Indonesia. Okay. Not sure I like that that much. I kind of like Truman into Syria, actually, and then dump the Middle East. That seems to be the final decision by the Swedish team. There's a lot going back and forth here. Sweden is very much... Uh, is spending a lot of, of uh, time right now. And of course these first early action rounds are extremely important. Uh, but in the last game against the US, we nearly ran out of time. Uh, both sides, in fact. So the 90 minute time limit for team games is, um, I think it's um, suitable, uh, but it also, it's not much, so it kind of, you always have the risk of running out of time if you, if you play very slowly, um, which I think is kind of interesting, because it is a part of the game, after all. 
to play um, according to the timer. You don't see people that often running out of time in a in a two player game. So as I was saying, um, Europe's not getting much love. I think that is in our interest right now, because we don't really have um, time to focus on it. And obviously, after we saw the goal, um, the Argentinian Argentinians are safe to head into France, but or sort of at least. But. I think both teams feel like they have more important things to do right now. Uh, but that means that in AR6, Sweden could use containment to break West Germany, which would be nice if the if the board state in Europe looks the same as it does now. Especially if the US hasn't cooed yet. Yeah, I've noticed the stream says um, Sweden versus the US still, which is not true. In OBS, it says Argentina. Not sure why. Right, so we saw Fidel there. Uh, I was doing something else. I oh, it was it, it was evented. And the ops went where? And then uh, Sweden scored the Middle East. So I think that makes sense. Oh, they cooed. Right. Didn't have any effect, apparently. And Justin is, is watching, and um, he's saying he's confused about not headlining NASA with the Middle East. And I think that would definitely have been a possibility. I, I feel like it was the um, the what happened with the uh, uh, DEF contract that kind of made them not want to play NASA after all. And in the end, it was just the one VP. So they decided to go for influence with NASA, making sure he comes back later, hopefully. And that was AR5. We're now going towards AR6, which I imagine will be containment, um, possibly to break West Germany. But Argentina has made sure they get their coup as they should.
They do not break West Germany, but they make some more headway into Laos and take up the struggle for South Korea. And the US managed to space, Arab-Israeli war. You do want to get off the ground with a space race, but that was definitely a playable card here. If they would have liked to play it. Heading into Egypt. I, I don't know, I think heading into Egypt here with the, the US, or well, Argentina, would not have been such a bad idea, because you would then um, make it to, to Libya before the USSR can catch up, and then you've got a very strong position in the in the Middle East. Granted that Nasser is still in the deck, but it's it's not the end of the world if you're in Egypt. Comes Romania, giving some B-style fuel, possibly, to the Soviets. Um, a slightly better hand. Um, only problem is CIA, of course, which they have an opportunity to get rid of. The US does not have any decent coup targets, so it might be a good opportunity to do so. And we've also seen Duck already, so it should be safe to do it. Then we've got a bunch of cards, three up cards that are very playable. Socialists might be a decent headline. Suez probably for ops. Cambridge 5 uh, is also a decent headline here. In fact, Cambridge 5 is quite good, uh, quite a good headline. Could definitely definitely turn things around in Asia or Europe if uh, if they have those scoring cards. Yeah, Justin, Justin uh, mentioned that uh, it's it's brave of me to try and comment a, a team game solo. Um, and yes, it is sometimes quite difficult to to fill the the uh, fill all that time with uh, with the intelligent stuff. Um, I'm going to try and just go for quantity instead of quality there. I think. And they do indeed have Europe, so Cambridge Five paid off, but they're facing a purge. It's not the worst hand ever to be purged with, um, but uh, purge is never fun, of course. Changing my mind slightly there and going for France instead. And I kind of agree with that. The The reason you want to be in West Germany is so that you can go into France. That, of course, gives them domination, making sure that uh, the US can't dump Europe in the first AR, but I would imagine they will fight for France instead. And considering that they... Uh, yeah, that looks good. That makes sense. Nice to get rid of uh, NATO as well. So they're giving up the coup here for Argentina. Uh, not a big deal, I should think. It's possible they might even not, not even use it. It's possible they might feel like they want to go into Portugal or Greece to fight for country count in Europe. Thank you. 
and they lock it in. So the question now is, how good is the Argentinian hand? If they have a bunch of high ops cards, they could go for an ops war in Europe. They could certainly go for the country count first, but they go for the coup to start off with. In Iraq, symbolic coup, but it does actually have an effect. And it's a pretty good effect too, because now the uh, the Swedes are locked out of of that part of the Middle East. Sweden decides to overtake France a bit, and I think. I mean, obviously you've got South Korea, that's very important, but you've also got the country count in Europe to worry about. This is a, an opportunity where you, you can definitely go for Europe Dom if you want to, but there's also merit to not doing it, and just be content with having taken France. Argentina up four points. Which, uh, with this board state, I don't know, there's, there's a lot to play for, but um, Asia is very much up in the air, but it looks like it will probably be even, barring some very swingy uh, IP war. Or some shenanigans with Japan. They're still holding you as Japan if they decide to hold it again. Again, but they won't be able to this turn, I should think. So they'll probably space it and then it will come back. If you were to hold it until turn 3, then I imagine you might consider going for Asia Dom via Japan, but that's quite far-fetched as things are right now. Europe, of course, temporarily red, but... Um, I still think Argentina can quite easily get Europe Dom, uh, or stop um, Europe Dom. And the Middle East is not looking good right now. We know Nasser is coming back, but even still, might be problematic in the long term. I feel like the, the the way the board state is now, I feel like Sweden needs a good D style into South America or a D coal or whatever into Africa to get a, an upper hand. Comes another big card for influence. And they do indeed go for the country count in Europe there. Turkey is still available, but, but I think it makes sense for the Swedes to... Okay. Well, it's better than using it for ops, I guess, because of purge. I might have wanted to take two out of, of Portugal here. If, you, if you're planning on going for domination in Europe, and if you're not, then I don't really see why you would do that in the first place. Question is, does Argentina... Oh, we know they have Europe scoring. Yeah, of course. So we know it's coming. So for that reason, it might be good to just try and push the scoring ahead of you for a bit. But I'm a little bit surprised that, yeah, they're sacrificing, oh, they've already got the Milops, sacrificing IP War for, um, for Ops in Europe, uh, and it would be ideal of them for them, of course, if they could have held on to IP War, but that's a tall order, probably, to make sure the Swedes don't get it. Sweden decides to fight for Europe, Dom by the looks of it. 
the fact that the US played, or that Argentina played a two-up card there to uh, get um, the UK back and then West Germany kind of signals not the best hand in the world. Because I think if you had the best hand in the world, you might have gone into Greece, for example, um, at the same time. Possibly. But now it would be the time to do that, I guess. Argentina probably feel like they're a little bit on the back foot here with Europe since they have to score it, and the Swedes know that they have to score it. But if they can fill up Greece, Portugal, Canada, then I think they'll be okay. The Swedes don't really have the ops to um, take any more three ops countries or anything like that. comes the blockade now, so like I said, not a very strong hand. D style cycles back. They did have Marshall. I don't remember exactly what they did with Marshall, but it might have been worth inventing here, I should think. Sweden decides to press on with Europe. I like it for the long term. I kind of like it for the short term as well. You're going to lose Romania though, so... But you gain a two-op battleground, and then all the all Argentina can do is, is fill up Canada. And hopefully they... <clears throat> And even, even that won't give them... Uh, actually, yes, that would break domination. So Eastern Euro East European here is a bit of a double-edged sword. I'm not sure it's going to give you Dom, but it's good for the long game. And you don't really have... I mean, the option here is, I guess, to take South Korea. Which would give you Asia Dom, right? Yes. Probably very briefly, but still. I'm not sure I... yeah. I mean, I do like Greece, because it's nice to be there, um, like I say, for the long game. But it's probably not going to give you Europe Dom right now, unless you're prepared to use either US Japan or the China card to take back Romania. Next turn. The other option, I think, is to fill up South Korea and then maybe go into Afghanistan. It's not ideal to give up the China card when you have CIA, but they don't know you have CIA. So the threat to Pakistan is nice, and if given the opportunity, you could take it. That would certainly think, uh, swing uh, things around in Asia.
But then you lose your abdom again, of course, that's a drawback. I suppose you could put one in Romania, if you want to. But then the US is probably definitely going to go into Greece. Yeah, I, I like this move. I think this is this is what makes the most sense. You're trading one non-battleground for another, another non-battleground. Very briefly. You can take Romania back later, if you want to. And I imagine here that Argentina might feel like they just have to dump Europe now. Or they might gamble that the Swedish hand is not particularly strong since they're under the purge, um, but since they are obliged to score it. And they do have a bit of a buffer of victory points to... to uh, to uh, damp the fall of a little, a little bit. And that is indeed what they do. Nicely played by the Swedes there in Europe, I think. Um, I wasn't expecting them to actually get domination, but they did, especially under Purge. And now they take the opportunity to space US Japan. Korean War is coming up next turn, so it's nice to be rid of it. And it actually does work as well. They have an animal in space. No. The other one. <laughs> Animal in Space is uh, next step, I, I think. And what will the US do here in the last turn of this... Our uh, last AR of this turn? South Korea is probably tempting, because you would then have an opportunity to to get Asia Dom, then we both know that the uh, Korean War is coming up, so you might not want to put all your eggs in that particular basket. Then again, if you don't, they are probably going to take South Korea anyway. So it's one of those times when you have to either play safe or not. Um, I kind of like Libya here as well, going into Libya. Um, because Nasser is coming back, after all. Burma might be good, uh, because you've got the IP war coming back as well, probably, or definitely at some point. And they have Vietnam Revolt, so a fairly problematic hand for the US here as well. I think they were happy about the purge. They decided to fill up Egypt, that's another way to do it. Oh, and then one into Burma. And the Swedes draw into Pakistani war, and Korean war, and effectors. So not a, not a lot of ops, but a fairly nice hand in terms of defense. Um, and you can certainly space NORAD, I guess, unless you want the, the ops. But I think I would probably space NORAD here. I'm, I'd be too scared to play it, even if it's turn three. You never know. You've got the Middle East, which is a pro uh, problem, of course. You do get a coup, so you might uh, you might do a coup with defectors, I guess, or Cambridge Five. And I like the IP war as a headline here. If they get India now, it would certainly turn things around in Asia a lot. Ooh, purge again. That will definitely hurt. Although I suspect... Hmm, and they failed the war. So th what looked fairly promising a few seconds ago now looks like a nightmare. Uh, a bunch of one-ups cards. 
can't space, you can space NORAD still, um, if you want to, uh, but then you're just going to have to wait out this turn and hope for the best. Middle East, nothing much is going to happen there, so you should probably dump that. You can, of course, you probably still do a coup with, um, with, um, Defectors or Cambridge. I don't think you would want to play CIA here, because, well, first of all, they will see the Middle East. Second of all, or probably even more important, uh, they will see that your hand is absolute shite. They still do that, though. Giving up. Giving up, um... CIA here. So what are we looking at in Argentina's hand? I believe we haven't seen NTB yet. We also haven't seen you in intervention, I don't think. It's always hard to keep track of the cards when you're not playing, but that's what I think. We've seen all the other four ops. Um, we are still waiting for... A five year plan. And Asia scoring. And decol. So a lot of important cards in the Argentinian hand here. Um, also a <coughs> reasonable amount of ops, especially considering uh, the Swedish situation right now. So Asia is the big deal. Will they try and fight for Asia? They know about the Middle East and the Swedes are going to have to dump it as soon as possible. And the uh, Argentinians will probably want to dump Asia as soon as possible. So we might see an Asia scoring here, unless they want to press their ops advantage. But I don't see how they could really gain anything meaningful out of that right now. Oh, Warsaw Pact. I think that was a redraw. Not entirely sure. They sadly needed that in Eastern Europe. That makes perfect sense. Country count in Asia, rather than trying to fight for South Korea. And I think you have to dump the Middle East now, otherwise it's getting even worse. I mean, the option is to go for South Korea and try uh, to get Asia Dom, but you're not going to get it in the long term, I don't think. They're going to win the Ops War in... Yeah, we we knew that, uh, but of course, if they had Europe again, that might be what they're thinking. Oh, sorry, just to get the access, but of course. It's a it's better than spending the one up. That's for sure. Comes five year plan. But they also fill up Iraq in the meantime. Uh, you can, you can't flip it. Uh, you can go for Dom that way. 
It's nice to be in Pakistan for the future. And the US, well, they can still get even more points if they really wanted to. Like, they could fill up Saudi Arabia and take the Philippines here, for example. And there's not much the Swedes can do about that. I think I would have dumped the Middle East here and then just let them dump Asia. I think that would have been a net gain. That would have been a net gain for the Swedes. They redrew d style and managed to UN intervene it. Imagine the UN intervening in destalinization. That, um, I think that's highly unlikely. Ooh. That is an expensive use of the China card that I'm not a fan of. That's better, but they probably still have the ops to fight you. I think you're just going to have to eat Asia here and, and hold on to the China card and hope for a better turn next turn. That's what I'm thinking. Like, if you give up the China card now, you cannot, You have to spend the rest of... You have to overprotect some places, too. The Koreas. I mean, Asia will Asia will be scored, so in the short term, it's not important. But nah, I'm not a fan. I don't think I'm a fan. They can just they can take the Philippines. They can flip Lao. I mean, it depends a little bit on what they uh, on what they drew. If I'm correct, then they should have NTB, Asia, and Decol now. I may be wrong about NTB. Fairly sure about Decol. And NTB can just upset what they just did in Asia fairly easily. Seven five now in country count, so they could take the Philippines and Lao, for example. And then you can't respond to that. He was Japan again. They flip. Alright, so I was wrong about one of those cards. They're now holding Asia. But it was still a 4 up. They decide to break. That really makes no sense. Yeah. So they still had to do that, but now they lost more points in the Middle East. And Asia is scored for even. Yeah, not a good turn for Sweden, this. And they have not managed to get either Decol or Destal, so things are looking bad.
Yes. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And here comes the coal, and it goes into space. Right, Argentina up six points. Granted, two rounds of purge kind of tends to do that to you. And again, very bad hand. Very bad hand. Shuttle might be okay. We have seen both Asia and the Middle East. And they will not be able to afford to space it. Grains goes to space. Uh, but, yeah, this is a sad sight to behold. Specialists playable. Defectors as well. Formosan. It's one of those situations where Formosan might be a problem. Um, yeah, I, I like the Defectors headline here. You want to save that VP, and you have nothing else to do. Um. Uh, so I'm not I'm I'm not a fan of Formosan here, but I think you're gonna have to play it. Um Puppets goes to space, I think. But OAS is not nice. You're gonna have to hold on to that. And East European It's not great to play Shuttle here either, because it kind of um it kind of depends on Middle East coming up before Asia. Um, but um, I don't. You don't really have a choice. All right, another annoying card, breaking Poland. With Africa in hand, I think you still have to go for the coup here, and not not care about Poland. It might come back and haunt you, but I think that's what you have to do. If you do that, then at least if they fight for Poland, then you can you can at least. Uh, get um, Africa Dom. Or at least you can score Africa 4. Alright, I like going for the 3-up card here as well, because um, a bad roll here would have ruined you. You've Now you've got a very strong presence in Africa. Um, or at least a strong sort of bastion in Africa. What will Argentina do here? Will they try and go into Poland? Or will they try and make sure they get presence in Af... Oh, man. <laughs> that is not fair. Not fair at all. The Swedes will be screaming and shouting by now, I'm sure. That is incredibly harsh. I think with that in mind... Well, yes, you do have access to Algeria, so you will want to go there, I should think. There's also the option of just dumping Africa, but no, that probably makes sense. No, not the what? Hmm. I don't know. Because now they... Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, okay. So with Formosan, that makes sense because uh, Special would have given them access to Algeria. So that is the better choice, I think. Although Formosan, like I said, it might come back to haunt you, but they don't really have much of a choice right now. Horrible. Uh, horrible turn four for Sweden. Uh, they can only hope that they get more red cards. Uh, they will have gotten rid of a lot of the bad stuff, though. So, But I am a little bit worried that this might give uh, Argentina the uh, time they need to get Dom in Africa. So I'm not sure if it's the best option here. What's presence in Africa? Like two VPs? Like one battleground and presents. Spacing the Muslims. And it succeeds. We, uh, Argentina gets another two VPs that they certainly do not need right now. But that does give you an opportunity to uh, grab Angola and possibly overprotect France a bit. If that's what you want to do. Sorry, um, did I say Angola? I meant Algeria. Um, and, um, yeah, you, yeah, France. 
I should think. Or you might want to No, I think it's France you want to overprotect. Seems like they're thinking about France or Poland here. And they changed their mind. Yeah, sure. But then they're going to go into France. Like, there's no reason not to go into France here. I mean, there's a little bit of reason. You might want to go for the country count. You want to, might want to fight... Or, like, I don't know, Benelux or something, but no. Mm. I don't know. Why would they not just coup you there? And then you have to score Africa, so then... They will take Nigeria. Decol is coming back. Or you can wait and do it when you have a better opportunity to to cause a um, distraction somewhere. I think I would still overprotect France here. I mean, that's why you waited to see what they did, wasn't it? So that you could overprotect France if they went to France. But they go to Poland. Which isn't bad. Um, Poland is, is a good priority as well. And Suez is still out there, so they might still be able to... Um, to get rid of that one US influence in France, if they feel like they want to. Oh, big card. They do not go for domination, though, in Africa, so be thankful and score it. And an early flower power, although Brush War has just been played. And IP War was played in turn 3, so... And Korean War wasn't played. Um, but it was played in turn 3. It wasn't invented. So, not that many wars left. Arab-Israeli War in turn 2, I think, so that's coming back. That's the only one, really, in the in the near future, before turn seven.
comes an early Kennedy for Ops. That's interesting. That at least is some good news for Sweden. Um, space puppets, perhaps? Oh, they're considering going for... Yeah, there we go. Filling up Costa Rica that way and also moving to Mexico early. I mean, Mexico is, is standard, but uh, when they do it all at the same time, it sort of signals a central scoring, I would imagine. But I don't think there's any point in trying to fight for country count or anything like that in the central. Um, there's always the risk of um, a Cuba realign, of course. That might be a threat, but not much you can do. Because if you spread out into Nicaragua and Haiti now, then you have to be able to follow up with a coup uh, when, the, uh, when the US coups one of them. And as it is now, you can't really do that because you have shit in your hand. That sounded more um, disgusting than I meant to. I said space puppets before. I, uh, obviously, space grains makes a lot more sense, and I think I said that as well at some point. You all know what I mean. But yeah, you're going to have to pay, play puppets or OES, um, of course. Which I might not have realised to begin with, um, that is a big, big problem. South African unrest gives us some much needed access to Southern Africa. A bit too late. But better late than never. Yes, and I, I agree OES is definitely preferable to puppets here because you can space puppets later, but OES would be just stuck with you for a long time. And also cause a bit less flexible and a bit uh, one less influence. Um, but South America is kind of where you want to go now anyway. But it saves them going to our, uh, Nigeria as well. And then what do you do? You can try a real line. A real line in uh, Venezuela. Just 
hope for the best. It's one in three, roughly. It's not such such bad. I mean, considering what you can do with the, with one up here. No, no luck. And here comes Marshall again. And the big spenders. Oh, oh okay. Um, you get salt, uh, but it's almost too late for D-style now. Um, again, a bad hand. You can't really afford to give them the three BPs from, from Dark. So that is very much playable, and it's nice to get him out before NASA. Um, Puppets is the worst card in your hand. I don't think you would space that, although it's almost sort of um, past its prime already. Uh, it's all, it almost doesn't do much anymore. It's just Nigeria. They have access to everything else apart from that, so... Not so bad. Independent Reds is annoying. If you do, if you salt for D star, then you can uh, remove Romania and uh, make Independent Reds playable. It's a long roundabout maneuver for something that doesn't really matter that much, but. I mean, Europe is the only place where you've got anything going, so you kind of want to hold on to that domination. We've got socialists. Um, and then, of course, the scoring. You can get rid of that fairly quickly. I mean, considering the board state, I think you want to retain Lone Gunman. You definitely want Defcon to be uh, a way to um, to victory here, or a possibility. Even though it's unlikely, but you still kind of want to have that option. Um, there isn't any perfect headline here. I mean, Socialists is nice if you can remove West Germany. You get You get some points that you desperately need. Uh, salts is an option. Missile Envy is a bit too dangerous. I think you might want to space Duck here. Because the three VPs is, is too much. P Puppets is less of a problem. Oh. I know some of the Swedish players um, like a bit of risk. Yeah, and they were fine. Right, our man. This could be... I mean, it, yeah, there, there isn't really any scorings that the U.S. want to get rid of apart from Europe, um, so that might be what they're looking for. Uh, we've seen Muslim, we've seen Flower Power, we've seen, um, I mean, I, I suppose Liberation, Lone Gunman again, but shouldn't be too bad. But having played uh, Kennedy in turn four already, they're probably quite worried about Lone Gunman. But we know where it is. Oh, here comes We Will Bury You. Interesting. 
that's some very um very useful points there for the Swedes if they can get it unless the US have UN intervention which would be um very harsh if they did uh but now you just got Europe I think so you would score that right no point in playing socialist governments or anything like that Are you thinking of salting before Europe? I mean, they're likely to get Europe anyway, so they're not in a hurry. Um, and now salting is more feasible because it doesn't bring DEFCON up to 5, but only to 4. Plenty of good cards to choose from. I think you might still go for D star here. Maybe not. I mean, I was just thinking about the Romania thing, but brushes. Um, I mean, if the if you if you were to get D star here, they would just go into Argentina right away, and then D star is pretty much pointless. Still gives you access, but. I like brush as well. In fact, you're more likely to get into South America with brush than with D star. And you can always score Europe before you play Tito. And you've got another card, so you don't have to play, um, you can, I mean, you can theoretically hold on to both Puppets and, uh, and Duck now, um, not that you would want to. I, I still don't think you can play Duck, but you do get the advantage of getting to coup, and then they can't counter coup, so that's, that's good, but two, even two VPs right now is a bit too much. I would think. So where would you go with brush here? South America is obviously very important. Italy is actually quite interesting as well. Seeing as the board state is very blue, you, you kind of want to open up um, avenues to, to victory from uh, you know, in other places, and Europe win would be one such possibility. And then, of course, with West Germany uh, in US hands, it's, it's always difficult to get around. But a can't hand with the strong ops and, um, I don't know, weak opponent, you might get an opportunity to, to flip that. Or late game with Reformer, etc. Um, if not, then... I mean, you could go for Libya or Egypt, but I think uh, not Egypt, obviously, with Sadat in hand, uh, unless you play that first, but um, then you might as well go for Europe, for Italy, I imagine, with Brush. So they get the three points from Khrushchev, uh, very nice. The US brings DEFCON down to three uh, with a fairly pointless coup. Um, I would think they would be worried about the counter-coup here. Now, you could go socialist coup into Zaire, that would be quite nice. Um, and you've also got the option of uh, trying a coup in South America, but 
Um, much harder to succeed. Then again, Africa has been scored already. But I think you want to coup now, right? Hmm, that's risky, but you do get DEFCON down, which I think probably was the main point with that. And, of course, if it had succeeded, it would have been a big deal. But it's nice to get rid of Sadat. Now you can still do a brush war in... in ooh, just about. Yeah, that's a shame. Right, brush war in South America. Then I kind of believe you should probably score Europe first. Because they're not going to score... If they have South America now, they're not going to score it until they've taken Argentina and Chile. So uh, you have time. But then again, you, you're not likely to lose Europe either. Nice. The Swedes do get a roll in their favour. And they're in Brazil, and uh, South America is looking a lot better. But I'm a little bit surprised that Argentina has delayed so long in uh, taking control of their own home country. Then again, they will probably do it before Sweden does. Take control of their home country, that is. Another point. That's what we need. South America Dom. They even prefer Peru to their to their own country. Oh, Argentina. Yeah, I think it's time. Get rid of Europe. What? Really? Oh, they still have Dom. But it's it's much less strong now. You would... I, I should think you would score Europe before you start messing with Tito. Tito um, leaving Yugoslavia and taking up residence in Romania instead. For some reason. I don't know about South America here. I mean, the only thing you can really do right now is um, try and uh, go into Uruguay, and that won't. Then they will just take Argentina. I suppose you could you could probe Venezuela, maybe try and get into Colombia or something like that, and try and set up a realign, or you could just straight up realign Venezuela if you wanna if you wanna gamble a bit. But I don't really. Wait, what? <laughs> easy. <laughs> Take it easy. Wow. Nice. That really paid off. That really, really paid off. Um, granted, Sweden's definitely had uh, the worst luck so far, so 
it's only fair, I guess. Um, there isn't much you can do with that final realign, though, but that definitely was worth the three ops. I'm just a little bit worried that you will get into a um, situation where you have to play Tito before you're obscuring. Because even now, Puppets is still a pretty bad card here. It saves them having to go into Zaire, and it saves them, it gives them Nigeria. And I'm not sure they have South America scoring. It doesn't feel like they've been playing towards that. Right, yusuri is gone, that's good to know. And just survive this one rear line. Oh, another one. Swedes. Oh! Alright. That is horrible. Very, very nasty. Nothing you can do now but score Europe. And just hope they don't have South America. And I think chances are they don't. This is a very odd South America in turn 5. <laughs> the only presence is the US in Chile and Peru. Here comes Suez now. Nice to get rid of that last, uh, that one influence in France, I feel. And of course, now playing um, independent Reds becomes a little bit more feasible. Uh, of course, after Europe as well. So, it's not such a big deal anymore. The uh, US fills up some of the countries that have been waiting to get filled up for a, for a bit. Mm. Uh, yeah, Puppets is uh, definitely space-worthy at this stage. So again, an ops advantage for the US. Ooh, and now they have headline peak as well. But Sweden has managed to bring down the VPs a little bit. Um, South America will definitely be very, very important coming up. But apart from that, pretty much everything has been scored. Apart from Central, which is only two VPs. Southeast Asia, which is also two VPs, I believe. Now, they decide to trigger Tito. For a shot at presence in South America. We go for it. I'm not sure about that. We've got salt as well. It was almost impossible to succeed. I think they would have been able to use that better somewhere else, like overprotecting the Koreas, or Poland, or even like one into Cuba. Or even one into Israel. Because you still don't have a battleground in the in the Middle East, and you can't leave that too long. The Arabs didn't really have a chance in that war.
Yeah, I saw the discussion in the comments about, or in the chat, about uh, the path to victory. Um, I feel like I personally, as a player, uh, decide way too late uh, about a possible path to victory. It's something I need to get better at. Um, and I, I feel sometimes some of the better players, um, they see, like, that DEFCON is the only... I mean, DEFCON is the only option is kind of an easy path to see, because it's basically when everything else is going really badly. Um, but, like, a Europe path to victory, or um, or if you can, like, I don't know, um, final scoring versus uh, versus uh, BP track, etc., etc. Um, I'm not sure exactly when, because it's also some... I mean, there's always the risk that you kind of give up on something too early, or if you're too pessimistic, or whatever. Um, so I'm not sure exactly when you when you decide to, to go for it. Uh, I mean, now the VPs aren't so bad, uh, but the board state, I would say, is very much in favour of Argentina here. Um, they did get Junta, so that's another uh, chance to get back into South America. And they've got Quag as well, which is interesting. Southeast Asia could give a couple of points if you manage to um, to um, take something there. One small step is interesting. Uh, most of the blue cards have been played by now, but we still haven't seen voice. Here comes Kitchen, which does trigger. Adjunta goes into Brazil, I should imagine. So, I think... I mean, the board state, in terms of VPs, final scoring is definitely not um, impossible for Sweden right now, but, I mean, it depends a lot on what happens in South America, and it's swinging back and forth a lot right now. Um, there's definitely a chance to get back into Africa. Central is fine, as long as they still uh, have Cuba. Middle East, I think, is the biggest problem um, right now, in the long term. So, I mean, it's it's... It's still kind of open, but I, I think, like, for example, right now, I would imagine that as the as the Swedish team, you would try and you would really want to try and get the China card back. Um, because even if the game is still open, it's very uncertain, and I, I, I kind of feel like you want to play a little bit towards DEFCON here. But the fact that they got Junta really changes things. Um, we're still waiting for ABM Treaty as well. So, they're thinking about where to go with the coup here. Um. Argentina is tempting, I guess, but Panama is a lot easier to turn into something useful. Um, I think if you, regardless of what you do, you want to spread out of Brazil as quickly as possible, uh, considering ABM is still out there. Decide to go for Uruguay so that they get an actual coup after this. Which I think makes sense. Um, because um, you're not going to do much with... Okay, yeah. Mm, remember voice, though, so maybe put one more into one of those. I would say... I'm not a huge fan of giving Argentina three VPs here. You've just about managed to get back towards zero. 
Uh, then again, your hand is terrible. Well, it's not terrible, but you've got some problematic cards. But I'm not a fan of giving up. Stuck here. Then again, Colonial is pretty bad. Bear Trap, obviously, is pretty bad. But you don't really want a Self Trap either. So. I guess the question is do you want to give up Colonial or Duck? But I think I would have put one in Venezuela, or maybe one in Brazil, rather than Israel here. Israel is important, but um, voice is still out there, so it would be absolutely awful if they managed to voice you out of South America now. Then again, if they have voice... I think that's a no-brainer, so they would just play it. So the fact that it takes a little while for them to play that... Okay, so Central America scoring. So they don't have voice, which is very good news, because then you will see voice in turn 7, and it won't come back. So now... I guess you might space Colonial here and hold on to Bear Trap. And you might even play one small step if the space succeeds. Or even if it doesn't succeed, you might want to play it. If you're going... If you're not going to do anything about Southeast Asia, then I imagine you should probably play it now. Alright, that didn't work. Now the question is, do you play the space race? Oh, sorry, one small step. Probably not. Because, alright, so Cultural is coming back. That's nice. They get the three VPs. Uh, mm. But playing one small step right now would put you at um, Headline Peak, which is nice, because you want to stop that. But then you won't be able to space voice if you get it next turn. So I, I would probably go easy on the space race here. And again, you are falling behind quite badly on the space race. No, thinking about going for the event there. It's certainly nice to get rid of the headline peak, but I think it's too dangerous. You would kind of like to hold it, but you're holding bear traps, so that's not going to happen. I... I think that spacing aggressively as the Soviets can definitely work, but that kind of hinges on getting ahead on in space, uh, so that you get the discard effect and the headline peak. If you're just catching up to the US, then... Uh, I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that voice was in the draw pile, um, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But it is. But you're holding Bear Trap. So maybe that was the discussion, or maybe that was the decision, um, based on that, that you can, you could theoretically bear trap yourself with, um, with voice.
I guess Quag in AR7 here is nice. We are still waiting for Chair. Um, uh, De Gaulle. Um, as in um, good red cards that are coming up. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I suppose. You can, uh, you can fight the country count in Europe. And how I learned could get you your milops without giving the US a co-target. Yeah, Formosan is coming. Really? I would have thought AR7 for that. Because the how I learned, if they're thinking about doing the how I learned thing, as the Soviets, it's... No, they can't be. I would have waited. That's a card that Argentina would have preferred to play, for sure. But still, not much of a quag there. I would imagine just play this and put it on... Okay. Put it on... I was going to say, put it on two. Um, now, of course, Argentina could... I mean, the the um, Swedes are, are, are likely to get a couple of points from this, at least, but but still, they're also risk... They also risk losing something like Brazil, Algeria... I'm not sure I like this. Also, there's a realign threat on France. Um, right now, it's not too bad, but... If they get the UK back... Well, that's not going to happen now. And they're, like, they're lucky they only had a bad card. They roll really well, though. That was a bit unfair, but I do think that the Swedes took a risk here. That, that could happen. Alright, so um, they get voice. Um, fairly strong hand in terms of ops. Nice with the UN intervention as well. You could then space bear trap and use UN on. Uh, no, sorry, you can um, use UN on voice. Um, space bear trap and trigger NATO, I guess. Brezhnev is a nice headline here. Because. You're going to use most of these cards for ops. OPEC doesn't do anything. Well, almost nothing. Chair doesn't do anything right now. NASA is nice, but it also doesn't do much. Yeah, no, you're just going to be playing ops here, probably, most of it. And uh, so a bit of brush headline is good. Thinking about what was discarded with Omit, I believe, Portuguese. Um, uh, that's the only thing I can remember. But I think it was a couple of cards.
but if I if I remember correctly, it wasn't too bad. Um, Alliance is coming up. That's going to be an awful lot of points. And the um, and Argentina has got that right now. They've also got EBM Treaty, I think, or we might have missed it, but I might have missed it. Um, but I'm sh I think it hasn't come up yet. And uh, Philip Brandt, I think. I'm kind of guessing here a little bit. I, I can easily have missed Philip Brandt. There is one influence in West Germany, which kind of indicates, but I think it's been like that for a while. And of course, essay scoring, which is US domination. But chair is a nice headline here. Yeah, I did not think of that actually. That's a nice headline if they go with South America. Okay, uh, that removes Dom at least. Nice roll. All right, just the one point. Um, that's useful. Very, very helpful for the Swedes because otherwise, with the five or whatever, you would have been on um, twelve, and uh, that's a bit too much. Talking about you and intervention here. I I would imagine you would use it on the boys and there's not really anything to discuss there. Space bat trap. Unless you're worried about preventing NATO. Wow. Wow. That is, um, significant. Oh, wow. That's incredible. All right, so, um, <laughs> DEFCON was at five. Might as well try and, West and realign West Germany, I guess. Um, that changes things a lot. Now, the uh, only thing standing between the Swedes and Europe victory is Italy. Uh, that will undoubtedly get refilled by the uh, Argentinians, but uh, DEFCON is still at five, so it's it's open to coup. It's open to another real line if you want to, although it's not really going to gonna do much, but uh, coup definitely could, uh, could take Italy. Very interesting um, move there by the Swedes. It might have been uh, fairly obvious, in fact, I didn't really consider it. I think I forgot that DEFCON was at, at 5. Um, yeah. That is huge. That is absolutely massive. And it's not often in turn 7 that the US does not have access to West Germany from, like, Benelux or Austria, Denmark, or anything like that, or even France. Um, I mean, it's the thing that you see sometimes in the early game that you can realign with Germany or you can kick them out with a blockade and they don't have access. But in turn seven, it's a rare thing. Yeah. I'm responding to chat messages here like um, 15 minutes uh, later. Um, yeah. The slow kind of communication talking to people in chat. Um, they respond to my comments 15 minutes later and then I respond um, 15 minutes after that.
Wait, no. No, there's no delay. Second time. Never mind. That's in real time. But they will only hear my response. 15 minutes later. Anywho, back to the game. Um, yeah, I mean, Europe. Very interesting, and, uh, and that certainly brought the game back to life. Alright, so they're going for Taiwan there. That is interesting. That would signal Asia scoring. Um, and, of course, reinforcing Italy as much as they can. And they should be okay in Italy now. Um, what can the Swedes do about Asia here? They can flip out. Would that make a difference? No, I don't think so. Yes, no, it, it, it would. But then, of course, Indonesia is under threat as well. They seem to decide to hope for um, another realign in Italy. That could easily fizzle. Wow! <laughs> Seems like they've decided to go for the high variance here, and it has paid off. Now, uh, Argentina has to go back into Italy, so they'll have to postpone the Asian, Asian business. Uh, but they are definitely able to do so, so it's not a huge deal in that sense. But it depends a little bit on what they have left in their hand. Norad, that was a redraw, I believe. Or maybe not. No, yeah, no, that was in turn three, so it was a redraw. Because if they want to keep realigning Italy, then they have to main, uh, maintain DEFCON at five, so they can't really coup it. If they had a 4-op now, might be tempted to coup Italy here, but not with a 3-op, I don't think. Hang on, they also played... Sorry, I missed that. The UN intervention... With what? With NATO? Yeah, they want to be able to keep cooing in Europe re and... Uh, realigning... An interesting strategy that <laughs> they keep getting those rolls. And now they have a shot at Portugal as well. Oh my god! <laughs> that is incredible. I mean, I have to give it to them for a very sort of. That's an imaginative kind of strategy. Um, it does require some good rolls. But they managed to get them. And to be fair, they've had bad luck so far in the game, generally speaking. So, so it is kind of fair. Um, but that could easily have, have gone uh, much, much worse. Now Europe is open. It is open to Team Sweden. Much like the Eurovision last night, in fact. <laughs> Didn't watch it, but I've heard about it. Um, oh my god, they had Europe scoring as well. That's six very useful points for Sweden. It keeps um, war games down a little bit, war games status, but uh, they're going to get those points back from Asia. They do not have any way to get into Italy or Germany. Um, so, um, right now the Swedes can spend some effort on trying to get Asia back. They are running out of cards, though. And since they used UN with NATO, they're going to have to play voice at some point. But that is absolutely amazing. <laughs> The, the European roles, I, I just can't get over it. <laughs> I 
I know sometimes when you when you play a team game, you're talking to each other and you're going like, oh, I, I feel like we have to go for the high variance here. And some people might be like, oh, no, it's too risky, or we should try and play more safe. But on the high variance side obviously won out here, and uh, uh, it paid off. If nothing else, it certainly brings the game uh, right back to life. I just hope we don't see an early war games win, for example, if 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 uh, Argentina scores Asia here and end up on like eight or whatever, um, that would be disappointing. Um, we've also got the Middle East, huge problem for Sweden, and because we we just now saw Europe scoring, which Argentina had to dump. Um, good roll, good roll. Then um, Europe is Europe win is not going to happen until final scoring. So they're going to have to survive until then. I'm not sure if uh, if that was such a good role, NASA. NASA, I didn't see what the role was, but they got the country. So, and it's a two. Who would nuclear subs? So nuclear subs was a known card as well. Comes OPEC now for the would have thought final coup, but they decide to go into Italy instead. Uh, they're gonna self bear trap. That makes sense. Yes, I like that. I didn't realize, or didn't think of that. Um, that would that allows you, obviously, to play NATO with the UN and still get rid of voice. That is the best way forward. No? And after I finally figured out their plan, they decide not to do that. They are catching up on the space race instead. I thought they were really gonna, so they're gonna be okay with voice. I guess it's not the end of the world. The US don't have access to Algeria, Venezuela is, they can repair Venezuela, Cuba is I guess kind of okay. You can get back in there. Um, I'd be slightly worried about the Koreas, perhaps, or even yeah, maybe not. All right, Nixon. That was known as well, and oh, that is tragic. That is tragic. Now, voice is easy to manage. I'm pretty sure we haven't seen a lion, so they... I think they're holding that. Um, but it's easy for me to miss stuff. Um, I'm not sure about ABM or uh, Will Willy either. I'm sure some of the viewers might have caught it uh, if they were played before. But I don't I don't recall ABM. It's usually a big deal.
I suppose the reasoning here is that voice does not hurt you uh, in Europe. And that's all that matters now. I, I think is what they've decided. I'm not 100% sure if I agree. Um, I like that. You want to go back into Syria, but Central is a problem. I think if they had Central, they would have played it by now, though. But of course, they might draw it next turn. You've got OPEX, so you, you, you can repair. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got three more turns to play before Europe kicks in, and uh, things can happen. And they are still in Poland, so they could... Yeah, there we go, four points. I would have put that last one in Cuba. Doesn't do much in West Germany, but Cuba could be, again, central... I'm not sure how much it is now, is it... Five? Four? Four points? No, I think it's five. Um, you was done without presence. Of course, the um, uh, Argentina could also just go into East Germany here or whatever. Yeah, Villa Brandt. Um, maybe I was wrong about ABM. Yeah, they're closing in on on West Germany. Alright, not the best hand ever. It's too bad with the Middle East. That will bring them up into War Games territory. The Middle East is, what, six points now? Something like that. That's bad. Solidarity is annoying too. Usually it isn't, but now it definitely is. I suppose you might want to go Cuban here, or Yuri and Samantha. It's not a great headline. Actually, yes, D-Style. I didn't even notice D-Style. Ooh, that is a shame. That is such a shame. Now, you might want to D-Style into West Germany. Take everything out of uh, Romania. No, Romania. Why do you care about... <laughs> nice. Yeah, I suppose Malaysia is, is perfectly fine as well. It's actually better, because you might want to poke Romania at some point. Or will you? No, you probably won't. It's an academic difference. Mm. Yeah, you've got Nigeria as well. I think you want to go in Europe, right? You want to at least overprotect Italy and West Germany once. It's funny, it's not often you see like a reverse D start going out, going back into Europe from the rest of the world. I might have put one of the Italian ones into Cuba instead. Perhaps. Hmm. Well, that's a that's a signal. Well, it's not it's not such a signal. I mean it it's you you're in bad shape in the Middle East, so it's it makes sense to go there regardless. Trying to keep the PPs down. <laughs> yeah, someone commented earlier about the uh the real lines in Europe, just real line West Germany for giggles. And yeah, 
That's what they did, and it paid off. It both provided giggles and a much better port state. So, I don't know, if you want to score the Middle East early here to um, minimize the damage, or if you want to hold on to it in order to try to see if you can wait out war games. There's three scorings here that would put the... Um, Argentinians in wargame territory. And South America is probably going to be a fourth very soon. And Africa Dom isn't far away either, so they are definitely turtling. The Swedes are definitely turtling in Europe right now, but it's almost, almost three more rounds to go. Three more turns. The question is, will Argentina try to get into Europe here with Chernobyl? I mean, Poland is... Poland or East Germany, I suppose Poland, are the most tempting targets. And uh, Sweden is going to have to hold on to solidarity here for dear life. Or Argentina could just go for the rest of the world and just hope to win by war games or even BP track before the game is over. It's definitely feasible, like the Middle East especially is, is a lot of points if they just lock that down. Of course they don't know they have the scoring. I mean, you should probably dump the Middle East here as soon as you can. I'm not entirely sure, but I... I mean, if, if they have war games, they're going to try and hold it for as long as they can to see if they can get something out of it. And regardless of when you do it, you're going to end up in war games territory. So... It's if they have war games now that it matters. <sighs> hmm. I mean, you want a battleground, regardless, I guess. And now, of course, you want to create threats as well in other parts of the world so that they leave Europe alone. But this will prompt them to fill up Libya. And then you're not really getting anywhere there. I'm not sure if Tunisia is such a good idea here. If if you had moved into Brazil at the same time, maybe. But you don't really have the ops to create something like that, because you have to take back Cuba. Even now, Cuba is is under threat. Very interesting game. I mean, it, it looked fairly bleak for the Swedes for a long time. Then they managed to get the VPs down to about zero. Uh, they managed to come back. South America looked decent for a bit. And then everything went blue again. And they got kicked out of South America. And, and uh, yeah. Very interesting game. But Europe shake-up certainly helped to... To make it more interesting. Um, and it, it feels a bit sad that even despite those incredible roles in Europe, 
Um, Sweden is still quite far from, from winning this uh, right now. But I mean, it's very much down to war games. That's all it, it is about right now. VP track could 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 do it as well. Um, definitely could. I was going to say, is this one of those rare moments when you want to actually use the second option on that card? Uh, actually, no, it's the first option. Um, you might. Hang on, what just happened? South Africa. I thought the US played South Africa and then... Yeah. All right, central looking stable for the moment. Oh, reformer, that could have helped. The problem isn't really Europe now, it's just surviving. And uh, now the US gets to, or Argentina gets to discard, so you kind of... That's not great, but you can't do anything about that now. Creating threats. And it kind of seems like holding on to the Middle East has paid off. They haven't really made it much worse. Allende? They've been holding that for a long time. I forgot about Allende. Right, so nobody cares about South America anymore, it seems like. Which makes sense, because the only way the uh, US can win right now is by uh, winning the game before turn 10, or before final scoring. And South America is not going to help with that. But Chernobyl gone without really having much of an effect. Uh, that is uh, well played by the Swedes and uh, unfortunate for Argentina. Of course, when they headlined Chernobyl, uh, they didn't know about the style, so um, it made sense to do it then, and then just give up on it, I suppose. Might have been worth uh, poking Poland, though. You know, solidarity is coming, or it might be, um, and... Um,
All right. They, uh, that might have been what they were waiting for as well. Now they have to score it. And that's only five points. Still war games territory, but it's it's not it's not too bad in terms of VPs. Do they have war games? Yes, they do. All right. Well, okay. <laughs> Uh, that was an abrupt end to a very interesting game, um, indeed, I'm a little bit bitter, not just that Sweden lost, but that we didn't get to see sort of the turn 9 and turn 10 before that happened. It would have been, uh, would have been interesting. Um, yeah, very interesting game. One of the first times I've seen a sort of reverse D style back out, back into Europe. Um, it's pretty cool, and uh, yeah, very interesting. And the way it swung back and forth, I was almost ready to give up uh, fairly early in the game, and the when Argentina got a, a huge head start, and the board state looked terrible for a while. And then the Swedes came back with some nice moves and a and, uh, fair amount of luck uh, with the real lines in Europe. Um, and it looked like it was almost... Um, the game was alive again. Um, but uh, but yeah, the ball state was just too strong uh, for Argentina. And all they needed was war games or a few scoring cards in their favour. Um, to get up to 20. So, um, tough game. Very well played for the Swedes uh, under the circumstances, uh, I should think. Let's see if uh, maybe they have something to say. Where is... There we go. Anton? No, he seems to have left. And so has the others. So, no comments from them. Um, hey, but, hello. Hey, there's Anton. Have you got something to say? What a weird game. Fascinating. I don't have anything to say. <laughs> no, I, I mean... Uh, I think it was clear what happened in that game. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I, like, at some point, it was like, what can we do about this situation that we're in? Uh, we're not getting any of the cards. We're not rolling well. Mm. Uh, okay, let's try Europe. So I actually had the idea before when we had Salt uh, yeah. that we could raise Death on uh, grab Brush War. And that was the but plan that, with uh, with uh, How I Learned as well, when you play that in, I think, turn. Exactly. So be before that, um, are you still on the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on, on this on this hand. Uh, mm. So we could have invented Salt here and grabbed Brush War. So the idea was with Salt, you raise that count to five, you realign with Germany, and then you Brush War Italy. Mm. Um, but at that point, they still had one influence in, uh, in uh, France. France. So yeah. they could, so they could get back into West Germany. But then they played the call, so we were like, okay. Or mm. as maybe. Mm. Uh, so we were like, okay, let's try yeah. it. Um, and then, but it was just, I mean, this turn forehand, I, I don't know how you get back from that. Um, no, it's absolutely awful. They rush word uh, Angola. So, yeah. I was but, surprised when you raised Defcon uh, to five there. I didn't really see, I thought it was more of a sort of VP play. I didn't see the real lines coming. I mean, it's a high variance thing, but you rolled really well there, so <laughs> it turns out it can happen. West Germany makes sense, and then Italy. Absolutely. I mean, it's Absolutely. just those two rolls. And then Italy and I didn't was... see any other way that we could win. So. Yeah, but you need to get Italy and Portugal as well at the same time, pretty much. Otherwise, they can just keep walking back in. Well, the, th the thing is, uh, they didn't have a lot of uh, ops um, mm. in that hand. Right. So if at, if at any point they only put two in Italy, we had a big coup, coup opportunity on them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they can't just place it again. Mm. Uh, so, sure. 
that was the That's idea anyway. But, but then we just <laughs> rely on the mouse. Yeah. And then I and then they played Chernobyl to try and get back yeah. in, and you did like a yeah. reverse D style. I thought that was hilarious. You don't see that a lot. I mean, that was the only way we could. There was nothing else we could do. <laughs> exactly. No. Also, we had no good. Uh, we had no good headlines here. So no, that was yeah. the only dead headline. We yeah. Could yeah. Do. Um, and uh, I, I love D style coming back like in turn <laughs> seven or eight even uh, to actually make sense <laughs> by going yeah. back into and Europe. you take out of Malaysia and you're going to exactly yeah yeah, yeah uh, cool. all right all right um, thanks for your comment well played yeah. uh, under uh, circumstances I'm, yeah but I'm you a bit exasperated by this game yeah you had such bad luck in the uh, first half I would I would argue like. Yeah. Being a purge I mean, to two twice. Turns, so and, two yeah. Yeah, two purges, purges and then that turn four hand was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway. I can't wait to, to see it. Sure. It's just uh, like a was... self self uh <laughs> save a masochist. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> torture of watching that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh it was great fun. Right. I actually um I was I was really glad that we could get three players together so that I could do the commentary because um Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. All right. Um Thanks for uh, your commentary, and uh, see you next time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. thanks to everyone for watching. Yeah. Take care. Bye.